day 11. It's about uh, 5.15 in the morning. I've got to pack in the RV and it's raining. I woke up to thunderstorms this morning. I haven't heard a thunderstorm in so long. Like I really don't want to drive a 36 foot long vehicle in the rain. Ugh. All right, we got to get moving. So today we head to Memphis. started to let up a little bit. It's been raining so hard for so long. And it looks like the rain's starting up again. That's just great. It was looking like rain might be a problem, but luckily our first stop in Memphis was indoors at a rock climbing gym. Hey everybody, it's me, Malika. And Zach, and we're here with Blessius. Hey, how's it going guys? And you're watching In Search of America Travels with Hyper. We are in Memphis, Tennessee. We got here a couple hours ago and we have made our first stop today at Memphis Rocks and we are being joined by Blessius who's gonna to talk to us a little bit about Memphis and some of the work he's doing uh, for St. Jude. Sure. And then in a little bit, we're gonna be joined by the person who runs this place, which is also a very community forward organization. Yeah. So what brought you here to Memphis in 2016? Yeah, so I moved my whole life. And so um, I met my wife when I worked in radio in Virginia Beach. Oh, cool. And cool. then uh, she's in the Navy and she got stationed here in Memphis. Yeah, I was been fortunate enough to do like YouTube and Twitch and uh, raise money for St. Jude along the way, which is also based right here in Memphis. That's right. That's what usually brings me to Memphis is St. Jude. I started reaching out to them in like 2016, but started fundraising in like very start of 17. I, I did stuff uh, on my own and alongside uh, GCX, which uh, was formerly known as Guardian Con. They did like a bunch of fundraising stuff. They had like people cool. like Dr. Lupo and uh, Ninja did stuff for them, King Athalian, Broman. Nice. And so I've been a part of that fundraiser for like two years. Nice. And so, um, yeah, I, anything to do uh, for St. Jude. And the last goal I had was if we reached 30,000, I would get a bad mullet. That's why I have bad hair. If you Google it, there's a picture of me in Princess Peach dress okay. with, with a mullet. So it's like... Nice. So you raised 30k to do that. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, since you're here and you work a lot with local charity, which is St. Jude, we thought, you know, let's meet here and also talk to Chris, the head of the organization here, which is, this place is kind of like local charity as well. So let's keep learning more about all the awesome stuff Memphis is doing to help out its local community. This is awesome. This is where it's at, man. Memphis rocks. Memphis rocks. Can, Memphis what rocks. can you tell us about this place? I can tell you whatever you want to know about this tell place. Tell me man. everything. I'm from this community, lived here my whole life. Um, I met Tom in 2000 and I think 15. He knew he wanted to do something that was for the community. That's awesome. And he knew he wanted to do something that they couldn't, that wasn't accessible so far. You know, he wanted to make sure it was a place where everybody can come and feel like family. And so that's why the name of our, our fundraising is One Family Memphis. And we came over rock climbing because rock climbing is a, it's a team sport. Like, and it's, it's fun, you have to trust people. They make you go against all the things you grew up learning in this community. You grew not to touch nobody, don't really talk to nobody. Like, it's all about self-preservation. But here, you gotta be trusting. You gotta trust somebody that holds you on the wall. You gotta, like, come into a new environment. You gotta try something new. You go against everything that's supposed to keep you safe out there but it's to show you that it's like it's different and i hope y'all know about our like our payment methods and stuff like it's a pay what you can it's the only non-profit rock climbing gym currency is the real objective and it's been like celestio celestio is from this community and they had no money and volunteered to get food you volunteering so much he was out where i work 40 hours a week and he was here when i come <laughs> in here when i leave yeah so it was like yo you want a job man like they say the number one thing to change a kid's life is a relationship. You give them mentors, you get you like be a part of their life. And we say, hey, you got some money, like you ain't got no money, or how much it costs, and like what, what? If you don't have no money, you want to volunteer, you can volunteer for a gym membership. Well, I'm hungry, you can volunteer for food. You ain't got to volunteer here, you can volunteer at a homeless shelter, you can volunteer in the neighborhood, you can clean up the streets. Dude. You don't have to like give us time. You give time back to your community. So just encouraging people to give time back to the community, exactly. you'll provide them with... What exactly. Because we're trying to express that you don't need money. Yeah. Like, we don't, you don't have to have money. I'm getting chills, man. We have a community closet, too, where we you can get six, up to six items for $4. And that means cleaning items, 
clothes, shoes, coats. And I was in there last week and I heard a man come in. He bought a pack of Pampers. He bought um, a bottle, some milk, um, like some washing detergent and something else he had. And he had $4. And he said, he said, my niece is having a kid and I usually wouldn't be able to get her this stuff. But when I come here, I feel like a millionaire. Oh. And I was like, that's what it's about. Yeah. That's what it's about. And so it's a bunch of people in the little pockets of America doing the right thing. And hopefully, you know, it picks up. And so that's why I'm here. Because I want to be a part of this change. And I know I ain't going nowhere. If somebody's going to have to snatch me up out of here. Yeah. Like it multiple is, times as you're walking around, I'm getting chills just because it's, it's seriously unreal. And it shouldn't be, but we haven't seen anything like this all across the country. I want to say that's a good thing, but also I just said, you want to see, yeah, you want to see. But we do, we like, this is Memphis Rocks. We got a one family in Memphis. We want to do like a one family Houston. We want to do a one family Detroit. Nice. You know what I mean? Like we want to do more of these, but we got to get a system in place of support of other people out in the world who want to see more of these. We're going to build something for them. But we need support. Memphis Rock, we need support. Okay. Like, Where should people go if they want to support? If they want to go to our Instagram or our website, if you go to our Instagram, Memphis Rocks, ROX, Memphis Rocks Climbing, you'll follow us. And then like all the stuff you'll is see always everything. there. That's what I'm today. Uh, I think these two are climbing. What? The Memphis Rocks Climbing Gym was such an inspiration. Malika and I were pumped to climb some routes ourselves. They pointed us to their Let's just say beginner routes. Okay, they were the easiest routes in the gym. And they were exhausting, but such a fun workout. Memphis Rocks is definitely a no pressure environment that anyone can feel welcome to climb at, but there are some seriously skilled climbers you might bump into. But let's eat. So Memphis is known for barbecue. Memphis has the best barbecue in the world. Oh, that is so good. Look at that. Oh, you got some cutaway footage. Do you want to go on a pony ride? Yes. I'm tired of walking, let's go. Well, I just want to say that this is the National Civil Rights Museum at the Lorraine Motel. Uh, everybody says that this is a very immersive, moving place to be. Obviously, this is the site where Martin Luther King was assassinated. It's kind of untouched. It looks just like the way it did when he was, uh, yeah. when he was shot. Yeah, it's a lot. So hard to take in, you know. Meeting, um, you know, Chris was awesome, and wonderful people who are trying to change the world. And he was trying to change the world, and you know, did have we come far enough? We're on our way to talk to a reverend professor activist. Doctor. Doctor. Who helped organize taking down the Confederate statues in Memphis. The Nathan Bedford Forrest statue was actually erected right on the heels of Reconstruction. So it was 1905 when that statue was erected. And you can't see it now, but the statue actually faced south. So it was on Union Avenue facing south. So that was a smack in the face to the Union Army and a ode to the phrase, the South shall rise again. The Jefferson Davis statue was erected in 63. When you know that as the history, there's a couple of ways to look at it. These statues are the gods by which white supremacists draw their inspiration. At the time, those statues represented the reminder that you'll never have this space without having to deal with this ugly history. I think the statue removal is a significant hallmark in the current thrust of activism because that was for us really the first major win. Yeah. The symbols matter because they point to the type of uh, vision that people have for the world that they want to be manifest. And so now we get to reimagine what this area and what this city and what this county looks like and can, and, and can become. Or at least we get to drive home the conversation about reimagining it now. After our talk with Reverend Fisher, we met up with YouTuber Blurred Without Fear to learn more about Memphis from another local. I feel like here, just because of the virtue of the fact that it is predominantly a predominantly black you know, city, 
and it's also a city that is for all intents and purposes just a really big small town like a lot yeah. of people know each other but you know it's it's sad to me that we still haven't gotten to like where i think we should be like i love this city i mean is it perfect no god it's not perfect but everyone i love is here everyone i know is here there are good people here that actually like want everything to be okay for everybody like genuinely okay for everybody and it's like a vocal minority of people here uh, you know that don't they're not necessarily racist but they are but they're ignorant of racism they don't they don't know these things yeah and it's because it's not taught to them and because we live in a society where some people want to shelter others from those harsh truths oh well we don't want to talk about race we don't we don't want to get political and that's how you birth that next generation of people who are just as ignorant of what's going on as the one that came before and it, it sucks but you know i it, it, i hope it gets better i do too you know i um, really do okay day 11 in search of america and we just explored memphis what did yeah. you think I'm glad we saw Memphis the way we saw it, which is with good conversation, people doing amazing things for their community. You know, we did the typical stuff. We went down Beale Street. We went to Main Street. We went by the, you know, Civil Rights Museum. We got a uh, Central Barbecue. We, I, yeah, both of us did. It was really surreal to stand in the place where that photograph was probably taken. Very. It, it did not make it feel like something that happened decades ago. It made it feel like something that could have happened yesterday. And I know we're only going to see more places like that as we go further into the south. It just, it, it really hits home, you know, and, and I hope if we can do anything in our journeys, we can help show people not just the struggles that others go through, but the things they're doing to help themselves. Yeah. They don't need uh, some, you know, white person with money to come in and save them. Like just empower them to run their communities the way that they know they need to be run yeah. and give them those opportunities. And to me, I'm like, that's the American dream. We're going in search of America. I don't know if I've seen something to me more American than Memphis rocks on our trip. Day 12, almost two weeks in, just a couple more days. We are in Raceland, Memphis, Tennessee. So I wanted to share something with you all here on day 12. I'm a huge coffee drinker, like it's part of my blood. And I knew that drinking coffee was gonna be a problem on this trip because I'm in charge of packing up the RV and getting on the road in the morning. I'd like a slow pour over, uh, an AeroPress, things like, you know, fancy coffee snob stuff. But in the grand irony of all that, what I ended up bringing and liking the most on this trip is instant coffee. And this is what's fueling me every morning because I don't have time to brew coffee or do it the way I usually do it at home. This is a really, really good compromise. It's good stuff. Burn my tongue. Too hot. Another day down, Memphis was a beautiful city that felt like it was evolving and growing right in front of our eyes. But it was time to head further west to the country music capital of America. In search of America, travels America. with Hyper. You know what, let's go back to the top. You wanna to do that again, you stumbled through America. In search of America, travels with Hyper. Today, we Nashville. are in Nashville, Tennessee. I jumped on your line. My name is Malika. And I'm Zach. And we are gonna learn how to dance country style. I did not sign up for this. This is Haley. Hi. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hello. Hey, I'm Haley Keith. Um, so I live in Nashville now, and I'm gonna teach them how to swing dance and two step, which oh, is we're swing dancing too. Yeah. That's so it's gonna be fun. like a country style that you're gonna see a lot of the time with slower songs um, or fast pace. Originally in Texas, we used to go swing dancing from the time I was 17 on Friday nights um, in bars, and it was kind of like you couldn't date cowboys if you didn't know how to do it. Oh. So, so if you want to get a cowboy or cowgirl. <laughs> yeah, so, so we learned that way. And this then, is how I pick up cowboys. Yeah, basically, or girls. So with that, you're just gonna go one and two and three and four. All right, oh one God, and two and so three bad. and four. Things made a lot of sense when we started. Yeah, anybody can two-step, look at that. But no one told me hips were involved. 
and that we needed to move in a circle. Eventually we got maybe a little better. Good thing we uh, married each other because we're not going to catch any cow people. <laughs> hey, any cowboy would be lucky to dance with me. Okay. You just have to kind of stand there and look pretty. <laughs> That's what I've been doing for years. Special thanks to Black Dog Recording for allowing us to be using this fantastic space. But I'm going to get out of the way really quickly. Can I get your names? My name is Nate Valentine. I'm Steffi James. Hi, I'm Natalie Duffy. And I'm Luca Di Fabio. Show some love for them in the chat room and follow those social media handles. You know what to do. Hashtag Travels with Hyper. I felt so fortunate to listen to live music. I felt like it's been forever. He's a five and dime candy guy. I've been dreaming for too long Of tomorrow Love to let the sun Warming my day And the moon It ain't my You'll feel this way too Do you even have a clue what I'm saying? It's my first time in Spain and Me Espanol is no being But I still think that we should spend a little time Getting to know each other's minds And you can show me your foreign ways This is how I want to spend my days here Cause a mi me gusta to smile A mi me gusta to laugh Gusta the way you say my name in your thick accent I know I'm not here for long And falling hard might be wrong So then we'll make a borrow language And sing each other Spanish love songs I mean, that was amazing Uh, can I thank you everybody? Thank you. Uh, I want you to keep going for like all night, but you know, like I have a lot of questions too. So there, there's a scene, obviously, uh, for music locally. Where are some of your favorite places to play in town? Unfortunately, obviously, with the tornado that happened in March, a lot of stuff has been, uh, you know, backtracked, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it was. Of... Uh, you couldn't even be in studios until July, right? That's what we heard? Yeah, uh, all home studios were basically banned in all of Nashville for a long, long time. Um, everybody circumvented it somehow. I found my legal loophole like everybody did. Um, you know, for me, it was production company, and I'm selling myself as a producer, and this is just my office, you know. But uh, uh, they legalized it now, so we can come out, you know, of the hiding, you know, and, and really have uh, small businesses. What kind of impact do you think it's had on the local music community overall? There's a lot of people that went crazy, to be honest. Uh, not in a funny way. Like, you know, a lot of artists and musicians, you know what I mean? Like, like you, you had your tour planned out, didn't you? And you had to cancel it. There's a lot of bands that I know, uh, that I, you know, speak to and all that, that I had to basically rescheduled their whole life. Of all the big music cities in the country, why is Nashville special to you? I think that it's a it's a big or it's a it's a small big town. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Everybody just kind of seems to know each other in some capacity. Or if you don't know that person, then you know someone who knows that person. I, I, I just realized, when you said tornado, you weren't talking about hypothetical COVID. You were talking no. about yeah, a tornado. Yeah, literally a tornado. It, it missed our studio. That just by, clicked. Uh, it missed our yeah. studio by a couple thousand feet. And it's like another thing I like about this city is um, they were turning volunteers away uh, because they had too many people helping clean up after the tornado just in the neighborhood. The camaraderie, af- uh, you know, after something like a tornado and they're, they're literally saying, don't come volunteer. We have too many people. <laughs> you know, do find another way to help out. Yeah. Anything is a place that kind of everybody comes together. The folks at Black Dog Recording put on such a great show for us, but our stomachs were growling. We all got Nashville hot. Oh, we did? Yeah. It was finally time oh for some world-famous Nashville hot chicken. I'm fine. Okay, guys, this is my first bite. It's very crunchy. It smells like chilies. Wow. So crunchy. The heat kicks in a little bit later. Mm, that is so good. Dude, I cannot deny the spice. Though. Like, I feel spice. Yes. Like, I'm good. But the chicken tastes so good. The chicken is really tasty. Are you okay? I'm great. Are you okay? Do you want some more water? Do you want some more ginger beer? I fucking love it. With our eyes still watering and our noses running, local musician Luke Holden, who was also our ambassador, showed us some of the historical cool music sites to see all over Nashville. What do people get wrong about Nashville? That it's all a country city. Yeah. For starters, that it's strictly country. Right. Because it isn't. Or that it's, you know, got a singular ideology to it. Right, um, right. Because it's in the South, when in reality it's, it's not, you know, you have a lot of leftists, rightists, yep. you know, people from all different walks, and uh, everyone is pretty conversational, you got know, it. Um, and be kind to one another, regardless of opinion. Okay, everybody, we're checking into our ghost tour. Everybody, I'm Jill. I'm gonna be your ghost host. Hello. I'm gonna show you the haunted side of Nashville. So the people in the rooms that are haunted that we point at tonight, they don't know they're in haunted rooms. So we can laugh at them from here. Now, people come out at night to stand where you're standing so they can see the top of the state capitol. See that cupola on top? At night, Andrew Jackson's wife, Rachel, comes out and walks around it in a tight little square. And people come here and stand and take her silhouette as she goes by the window. We get visitors who stand right here and they start taking pictures of that hill in June and July because it lights up and twinkles with little golden orbs. And they've never seen a firefly before. And it just stuns me to this day. I meet people who've never seen a lightning bug or a firefly and they think they're ghosts. And I say, those are the souls of the dead and they're coming to eat all your faces off. And they run and I laugh at them and it's really fun. Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you so much for joining us on our journey through the northern half of Tennessee. We had such great ambassadors to show us the ins and outs of Memphis and Nashville, and we'll remember this part of our journey for the rest of our lives. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that sub button and leave a comment and give us a thumbs up. See you in the next video. Join us next week. Bye. Bye. Oh, oh.